Das neue Beamer System empfiehlt sich zur Wirkung. The new Beamer System can be recommended for effective prophylaxis as well as for use as a complementary therapy especially in cases of regeneration and rehabilitation as an addition to proven clinical therapy concepts and a way to increase their therapeutic effectiveness. At times, the dose of medications with unwanted side effects can be reduced. We can say without exaggeration that the Beamer system is a groundbreaking innovation for modern preventive medicine. It is the most effective and at the same time most widely researched physical therapy method available today. In summary, we can say that by using the Beamer, our physical and mental capacity is increased. This happens as a result of stimulation of foundational regulatory processes of blood supply to the organs. Therefore, the effects of the new Beamer system not only address individual organs, but rather the entire organism. Improved blood supply due to the stimulation of local and superordinate regulatory processes leads to improved organ function. This is possible because delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the cells, as well as removal of metabolic end products, is supported. At the same time, the body's own immune system is strengthened because increased blood supply to the organs benefits the immune reaction of the white blood cells. This means a better quality of life and decreased susceptibility to infection especially for individuals exposed to stress and most importantly for older individuals with compromised microcirculation. Discovery of the redistribution phenomenon of microcirculation during the sleep phase was a significant addition of knowledge for preventive medicine and along with this the possibility of health promoting influences of the Beamer system with a sleep program. According to most recent research, the sleep phase is of higher significance for regenerative processes in the organism than previously assumed, in particular as it relates to the process of immune reactions. The Beamer takes this new knowledge into account with its sleep program. I advise my medical colleagues to use the Beamer system for complementary therapy on a broad scale for the benefit of their patients. Just think of the proven effects of the Beamer system on the tonus regulation of the blood vessels provided by the endothelium, on the excretory function of deficient kidneys regarding removal of toxic substances that must be removed by the urine, on the support of the immune system, and much more. So don't hesitate to use the Beamer system in addition to established therapy concepts for numerous chronic illnesses, chronic pain, and many other conditions, especially in situations where no known casual treatment is available and only the symptoms can be addressed. It is definitely worth trying a promising therapy. The research area of microcirculation encompasses the laws of metabolism and the mechanisms of the body's own immune system in the area of the smallest blood vessels. Thus, not only the behavior of the red blood cells, the blood plasma and the blood platelets, but also that of the white blood cells and the lymphatic system. Microcirculation, therefore, is the most important component of the human circulatory system because it is here that the metabolic exchanges in the cells take place, as well as the first responses of the immune system. It is generally accepted today that many diseases of the human organism are caused or at least determined by disturbances of microcirculation. Therefore, regenerative processes in the organism are not possible without the respective involvement of microcirculation, which results in the significance of microcirculation for preventive medicine. Research on how microcirculation functions still requires a very high material and personal investment. 
An intravital microscopic examination device with high resolution is needed. A high-speed camera with highly sensitive film that can take between 75 and about 300 pictures per second. Auf einem hochempfindlichen Film aufzunehmen. Schließlich benötigen wir noch eine Vitalmikroskopie. Lastly, we need a vital microscopic reflection spectrometry unit, white light spectroscopy, and laser Doppler microfluorometry. Befunde werden auf extrem hochempfindlichen Film aufgezeichnet. Results are displayed on highly sensitive film. This special film is developed in about 40 complicated steps and then read by a fast computer via a loading system. With the help of these quick computers, the measurement values for diverse parameters can be determined, for instance the distribution status of the blood in the capillary networks, the flow of the blood cells, the local hematocrit, the adhesion behavior of the white blood cells, which is an immunologically interesting value, and many other characteristics. Ich fasse die Forschungsschritte der letzten fünf Jahre hierzu zusammen. Fragt man sich, welches Schlüsselmerkmal... Here is a summary of the research completed in the past five years. If we ask which key characteristic indicates therapeutic success in the area of microcirculation, special importance is given to the vessel wall movements of the small blood vessels. Blood vessels can change their diameter and thereby regulate the blood flow. A narrow vessel always means less blood flow, and a wide blood vessel a higher level of blood flow. But now it gets complicated because two types of vessel wall movements take place. I will demonstrate it on my arm. Imagine my shoulder is a large arterial vessel which continues to decrease in size all the way to my lower arm and finally transitions to the capillary networks in the area of my wrist. In the area of the larger vessels, the wall movements are initiated by the nerves and are rather slow. A sort of superordinated regulation by the central nervous system. In the wrist area, where transition to the capillary networks occurs, localized mechanisms are at work. The vessel wall movements here are much faster and rhythmical and are caused by contractions of the smooth muscle cells in the area of these vessels. These pulsatile components of microcirculation are much quicker. We know today that these vessel wall movements at the transition to the capillary networks are about three to four movements per minute. In case of abnormal alterations, for instance in very old sick people, oscillating movements happen only about every 10 minutes. What are the consequences of this decreased pulsation of the vessel wall movements? Well, the distribution of blood in the capillary networks is impaired. That means less of the capillaries are supplied with blood cells, with the consequence that delivery of nutrients to the cells and removal of metabolic end products is delayed or restricted. Where is the main research emphasis today in the specialty area of microcirculation? Well, it is in the areas that are most relevant, the medical care of stress-exposed and older people in particular. What are our main issues here? Older individuals often suffer from several illnesses and take several medications at the same time. An immediate problem usually is the undesired side effects of prescription medications. In many cases, drug therapy has also reached its limits. We therefore desperately need some new therapy options with as few side effects as possible that for instance could enable the patient to take a lower dose of prescribed medications and thereby at least reduce the risk of undesired side effects. For effective prevention, therapy optimization without or with little medication is needed, not only for older patients, but also for younger, stressed out individuals. But how can we accomplish this? 
im Mittelpunkt der Forschung des Instituts für Mikro Functional disturbances of microcirculation are the center of research at the Institute for Microcirculation in Berlin. In particular as it relates to the distribution of blood in the networks of the smallest blood vessels in the organs, the capillaries. Of significant importance is research in the area of the local and superordinate regulations of blood flow in the smallest vessels. Knowledge of these laws inevitably results in conclusions for efficient therapy in case of illness. In the past, we conducted research on the effects of beta receptor blockers, ACE inhibitors, X-ray contrast mediums, prostacyclins, homeopathic medicines, and in more recent times, a variety of complementary medical therapy methods in particular. Here are some remarks regarding the use of the Beamer system. The lasting effect of Beamer therapy could be prolonged by several hours with the new Beamer system. We still recommend a longer application, especially for older individuals. For effective prophylaxis for the home user, we recommend not only regular use of the Beamer system, but also adherence to general health maintenance measures, balanced nutrition, plenty of fluids, age-appropriate physical activity, avoidance of damaging substances, reasonable stress management, and much more. Our next step in research was to answer the question whether a specifically timed signal pattern is of significance for this transfer of energy. We found the answer to this question through intensive research. The specifically timed pattern of energy transfer actually is of great importance. It explained the biorhythm of regulatory processes of our microcirculation. Not only the biorhythm of local regulatory processes, but also the biorhythm of superordinate regulatory processes. Imagine the physiological and biochemical processes that form the basis of regulatory processes, like oscillation, with regard to the ability to locally alter the concentration of involved substances, which combine to create the complex process of oscillation. Sort of like an orchestra with a fabulous director. But not only centrally through the nervous system, but also locally. The superordinate and local mechanisms of microcirculation differentiate themselves through their basic oscillation patterns, as we found out. We know today that the oscillation processes of local regulatory mechanisms display somewhat higher frequencies than those of superordinate regulatory processes. This was the key to develop an efficient simultaneous stimulation effect on local and superordinate regulatory mechanisms of microcirculation. The only thing left to research was which resonance frequency would stimulate both regulatory systems optimally. A new generation of Beamer was born the minute we were able to determine this. At the same time, we found a new effective therapy method for impaired and disturbed microcirculation. Now the immediate question arises, how can these pulsatile vessel wall movements be stimulated? What type of energy, physical or chemical, is needed for this? Is it a high level of energy or is a low level of energy sufficient? All physiological processes, like vessel wall movements for instance, have certain biochemical reactions as their source. These processes always need a certain level of activation energy. That means a certain amount of energy has to be used to make these reactions even possible. In the living organism certain biocatalysts are present. The enzymes, which cause a reduction of activation energy, so that smaller energy contributions can initiate biochemical reactions. We know today that entire chains of enzymes contribute to the regulatory processes of the pulsative vessel wall movements, which lead to an ever-decreasing level of necessary activation energy until only very small contributions of energy are needed.
Therefore, a very small supply of energy is needed to stimulate the pulsative movements of the vessel walls. But how can this type of energy delivery happen? As chemical energy via medications? We then have to deal again with undesired side effects which we are trying to avoid. As physical energy? This is entirely possible through certain electromagnetic fields as energy transmitters without any side effects. And now we can understand why not any kind or sequence of electromagnetic signal, for instance any rectangular pulse or any triangular pulse or any trapezoid pulse, brings optimal therapeutic results. This is accomplished only by the very specifically timed signal sequence used in the Beamer system. We can say without exaggeration that the Beamer system is a groundbreaking innovation for modern preventive medicine. It is the most effective and at the same time most widely researched physical therapy method available today.